and just for clarification, real fast on that last episode, the reason I was second guessing the before these ones is because seven and eight, or well, eight specifically comes after X one production wise because it's a PS one game. So right. there you go. But hey, Flame Mammoth stage. So back on that uh, stage interaction thing from uh, Spark Mandrel's level, this would be the lava stage. But because we beat Chill Penguin first, for whatever reason, that makes a blizzard inside the lava garbage disposal plant. So all the lava that I would currently be taking damage from is iced over. Uh, so it's not instant kill lava? No. Um, I don't remember how the jets have fired. Like, yeah, that cracked mm -hmm. thing right there. Uh, that would be a fire jet that comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think that's an instant kill. It is in the Game Boy games, which is shitty. But uh, the lava isn't in either of them. Uh, that jump is super hard to make, and if you mm. and if you break that first block and then fall, you have to basically restart the level. I think you can uh, die, and it'll reset, but who wants to die? And so this one gives you the gun upgrade, yeah? Yes. This Does the plot happen if you don't get this? Yes. Uh, so it'll be more obvious like when it actually comes up. Uh, the reason this capsule is... I mean, I'm assuming this is the reason this capsule is really hard to get compared to the other ones... Um, is because plot later on happens and you get the buster that way. So you can't not complete the game, or you can't complete the game without the buster mm -hmm. uh, at all, kind of like you can't complete it with the legs. So in this game, you actually end up with uh, two of the four armor parts, regardless of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So I guess technically that means the arm parts are ones that you can't avoid either, just for a different reason than the capsule one in a Chill Penguin stage. But yeah, that's really cool. Uh, it doesn't have any different uh, difference, though. So, like, no matter which way you get it, the buster is always the same. I thought there was something There else. is in the PSP remake. Oh. But there isn't in this one. There's lots of things in the PSP and remake. That's at least a change that's cool and makes sense. Most of the changes in the PSP remake I do not enjoy. Much like I kind of don't enjoy that room because of those pickaxes, like even knowing where everybody fucking is. Pickaxes are the best. So, uh, what are these blue dudes supposed to be? Like, the other junk shit are, uh, like, that's obviously from the, another the level. The Boros. Yeah, from... but what are the blue torso dudes? The blue torso dudes are, uh, Scrap Robo. So they right don't have an actual? No. Yeah, they're just, they're specific to this stage, and so are the, uh, Udoboros heads. But they don't actually interact with you at all. I miss the Cyclops Joes. Oh, like the old school regular yeah. Joes? Yeah. I wonder if they've got a neat name too in this. Maybe. Oh man, that fire animation. Ooh, I know, right? Damn. High, high budget background art. Hoganmer. Hoganmer. But yeah. I'm sure, that means something in it some might. language, but. I like that Flame Mammoth actually is big enough to have the little Sigma logo. I mean, from this angle, it's a three. <laughs> but uh, that's just because, you know, the sprite mirroring. There it is! It's actually got it! It freeze frames on it so you can kind of see through all the explosions. I like that half the time Storm Tornado doesn't show up due to frame rate. Yay! Should record at 60 FPS next time. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, we should. But, uh, yeah, no. So that was that stage. Cool stage interaction. That one always strikes me as really short. And simple, yeah. yeah. And, like, no real tips for it. But I guess that's also because there are certain hazards that are gone because yeah. of the chill penguin thing. Also, Fire Wave is, like, my favorite weapon in the franchise. It's such a good weapon. And you're, it's just going to get showcased all over the goddamn place in this look. And pretty much for the rest of the playthrough, which is real nice. I made it a point to do that because I wanted to get lots of footage of, like, look at Firewave, just look at how good it is. I'm sure you're aware of this shit, but for the viewers, I want you to pay real fucking close attention to all the fucking backgrounds in this stage. There's so fucking many, and I fucking love it. Yeah. Unlike some other games that I can mention where you can see the fucking moon just over repeat and over and four over times again. in the same room. Also, since we're here, we've got the uh, Batontons from the classic games, that little one right there that I just killed. And that gives you a health. It's the only item it can drop is an extra life. I said health the first time. An extra life. So it can't drop anything other than that, but it isn't guaranteed to drop it every time. Uh, so as opposed to the Baton Bones, 
that one. I don't remember specifically what it is. I think it's like Baton Ton and then a number or something like that. But that's just like a little Easter egg thing from the classic series. We talk about that a lot, actually, in uh, the alternate playthrough at this point, so... For, for added commentary. Yeah, more background changes. There's like a mid-ground and a background to this thing. Yep. I fucking love it. It's like a whole mining processing plant thing. But yeah, here's Firewave just doing Firewave things. Uh, what the fuck is this thing called? Like, Mold Digger? Mold Borer, I think. Like, B-O-R-O-R. -O -R. Uh, let me pull that up real fast. <laughs> Open to that page. Uh, I've got the art book on me. Uh, but yeah, no, so that all was just Firewave doing Firewave things, which is just, yeah, B-O-R-E-R. -E -R. So, you want to go into how you're just Kringle fucking the Mets? That's what I was about to do, and then I had to name things, but uh, it'll be here again. So basically, Firewave's animation frames are as such where when you turn around while you're still using it, it's still there for just a little bit, mm -hmm. and the Mets will... Uh, pop up the moment that your back is to them because they think it's like counterattack time. That's just how they're programmed. So if you're holding it down and you just like flick the other yeah. direction real fast, the fire is still on top of them and it kills them in one shot. So it's like the easiest way to kill them in this game if you don't just want to blow past them or deal with any other timing because you can just like do that and it works literally every single time you do it on every stage they're on. It's fucking amazing. It's just like one of the other reasons why it's such a good fucking weapon. What would have happened if that mine cart impaled your spine? Uh, the spikes on the sides of the carts do do damage, uh, but it's not an instant kill like the other spikes. It's just kind of like... I think it's mostly so that you know to jump on top of it rather than walk past it. Right. But it doesn't have any damage based on velocity or right. anything. So, alright. No, that would be really cool, though. So that heart tank up there, which for whatever reason... I was going to mention this. I'm glad I remembered to say it. Um is, like, the one that sticks in my head the most. I think it's because you have to, like, fight the hardest to get to it because of the mobile horror that you need to fight. Um, but I talked way back in Storm Eagle stage. Way back. You know, whatever. So, um, no big neat background. Yes. This that is one of the coolest backgrounds in the franchise. I love just, like, look at this sprawling landscape. But, um... I, that's a spot where the helmet should be required. Mm. is, like, the mole bore, you should still need to, you know, wall jump up to it. Yeah. But, like, there's a part of this stage that I blew through, so, you know, you can go back and see it, where there's, like, two big health capsules, and you have to headbutt to get to those. But not for the heart. It's, like, that's backwards. Like, you shouldn't... Yeah, like, that does it, seem backwards. So just, like, put those blocks there. So it's just, like, more stuff that you need the helmet for, as opposed to just, like, just... It's just the, the arm upgrade. That's the only time you need it to collect any specific items. And that bothers me. But yeah, we had an armor removal weapon with, uh, with electric spark. And despite it being his weakness weapon, real quick before this video ends, um, as it ends, as it ends um, you actually do still need to time it so that it hits him. He can still block that with his armor guarding thing. It's just once you make direct contact with the armor, it explodes off and you're good to go.